So I made a little bit of an error that will actually drastically affect the functioning of the code. So it's one of these things that, that can be a little bit hard to, to detect, but if you're getting weird data, you know, this is the kind of stuff you gotta look out for. So what's going on with these two for loops here is I'm saying for I in the longer list, so the, the, the mesh that has more faces, check every single one of those faces against the mesh that has less faces. But up here, what I'm asking is if uh, if length of the first list is less than the length of the second list. So this is basically the exact wrong symbol. It needs to be that. So uh, And then this needs to be updated as well. So the way this should read is if this is longer, then start with that list. And if this one is, if info B is longer, then start with that list. So apologies for that. Uh, so now that we've got the... Uh, the distances we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and for each face, we're going to print whatever the minimum value is of our face distance list, just to make sure it all kind of makes sense. I'm going to do that for both of these. And a, a good place to start thinking about uh, using functions is when you start repeating code over and over again. Like in this case, we've only got like maybe one more line, so I'm not super worried about it, but uh, there you go. So let's go ahead and run this. And I, I already see I'm going to get an error, but I kind of want to show you what it's going to be. So it says expected and indented block. So what that means is I have a, a for loop and I've basically just screwed up on my space in there. So I didn't actually see anything inside the for loop and understood that there was probably a problem there. So let's run this again. And what we get here are the minimum values of all, all of our little test cases. And what we can see is for most of them, the output is zero, but for one of them, the output is not zero. So what this means is for most of these faces, there's another face center that is in the exact same spot, but for one of them, there isn't. So we wanna try to track this guy down, put him into a list, and then uh, once we're done with our calculations, we'll go ahead and delete it. We don't wanna delete it until we've tested everything because we'll start changing, uh, changing our face numbers around and that will be a problem. So rather than printing this, what I wanna do is ask a question. I wanna say, if this, or the minimum of our face distance list equals zero, then we're gonna add this face to the kill list uh, for, for the next step here. So this means I need a kill list. So let's go ahead and we'll make a new list up here. And we'll just call it kill list, because why not? So the face, how do we figure out what face it is? Well, it's gonna be whatever the i value of our, or whatever the, the i count is on our object. So info a, the first item in this correlates to the first face of object a and the second item in info A correlates to the second object in, in object A and so on and so forth. So we're testing A here, that's what's being looked at in our the, the top of our, uh, our for loop here. So what I wanna do is I want to uh, append, so we'll go kill list dot append info A, sorry, object A, Plus, and then we need to sort of make our little face stuff here. Str i plus close bracket. And we'll do the same thing down here. Making sure to maintain all of our spacing stuff. And in this case, we will set this to object B. And at the end of it, I am going to come over here and just for now, we will print our kill list, which should basically have one face. Ah, whoops, what I meant to put here is does not equal zero. Because again, zero is our uh, test where we've confirmed that there are two faces in the same spot. Let's go ahead and run this again. And there we go. So it's gonna be p cube one dot face zero. That is our target here. So let's just kind of confirm, should be this face right here. Look at that, p cube one face zero. So 
At this point, we could do something like four. Well, we'll deselect everything. So MC select D select equals true. And then we will say for item in kill list, because uh, it's going to be potentially a fairly long list. We will say MC dot select item. And we will, for our argument, use toggle equals true. So this will just basically add it to whatever the selection happens to be. And then once everything is selected, we'll just run ourselves a little delete command. And that should, that should do it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and delete my test cubes. It's going to take quite a while, most likely, to process all of the, uh, the missing faces uh, from our head here. Let me go ahead and uh, we'll go to the outliner. Make sure they're in the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the code. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to run it. In fact, before I do that, I've got a, a minute here. I want to try to figure out how long this whole process is going to take. So I'm going to, I think I need to import time. And then I can at the, so this is basically the beginning of my code. All the stuff here is my, my two definitions. I can say start equals time dot time. And then once all this stuff is done, I can say end equals time dot time. And I will just print this took plus uh, end minus start plus seconds. All right, so go ahead and save the script. We will pause the video and run the code and see how long it takes. Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, the the code was just running and running and running and I wasn't getting uh, any results. So I stopped it and I took a little bit of a closer look and, and I sort of made some mistakes here. I wrote a bunch of code and then I didn't really test it on um, sort of an intermediate model before jumping into my great big model here. So I, uh, I took another look and I've made a few errors and I wanna just kind of go over those with you. The first is down here with the, uh, the end minus start. I need to convert that into a string, otherwise I get my error about concatenating strings and floats. The other thing I forgot to do is here, I need to include a bracket. The other thing is the distances I'm getting are actually 0, 0.0, not zero, and so this is gonna be an int and the other one is a float. I'm not sure if that's gonna cause an error, but this is just kind of making this little section here a little bit more uh, robust. The other thing that I forgot to do is I make sure that there are two items selected and then I just kind of power through here. We call that get face info function. But uh, I never deselect the second object or do a unique select on the object. So I end up with sort of like double the face count or, you know, whatever these two faces together end up being. So that screws everything up. So I just need to add a little line here that does a... Uh, a unique select of whatever my object happens to be. And then down here, I made probably the most serious mistake. And it has to do with variable scope. So I have this uh, face distance list. This is where I'm keeping all of the results of my comparisons between different faces. But it, it got declared up here. So what's happening is let's say this is the, the function that's getting used. Uh, I grab the first face, uh, the, the first face here in uh, uh, info A list, which would be like whatever, one of these faces, and I'm comparing it, whoops, comparing it to the first face over here, which is gonna be the, the uh, zero face of info B. 
and I go through all of the comparisons, and if I get my distance of zero, or if I, if I, if I uh, yeah, if I get my distance of zero, then I never put anything in this list because this has to basically evaluate as there are no zero distances. So if the first one happens to evaluate as having a match, I never re reset the face distance list. So after that, basically I just keep appending all of the distances and I never get this condition met because there's always going to be a 0, 0.0. So what I need to do is actually grab the face distance list declaration statement and put it here under the first for loop here. So this is basically going to reset it for each face because what I want to do is, is I want this test to only kind of exist for each face. So let me come down here and do the same thing over here. So I think that's all of the bugs. Let me go ahead and save the code. And uh, I'll reset the position of the head here. I'm going to pause the video and run it again. Okay, that's more like it. So that took a little bit less than a minute, which is kind of what I was expecting. And as you can see here, we have these two meshes now matching in terms of which faces are missing and uh, which faces are still there. So a little bit of some backflips there with regard to uh, this, this uh, section here. We've got some nested for loops, but in general, the commands that we're using are pretty straightforward. We've got some selects. We have a confirm dialog. We have poly evaluate and poly info and uh, a couple of little functions here. So this is pretty much par for the course for my uh, intermediate tutorial uh, series. Uh, most of them are, I think, a little bit shorter than this one. Uh, we cover, there's a procedural solar system tutorial and uh, we uh, find uh, prime numbers using modulo and uh, do some kind of similar polygonal geometry analysis and manipulation. And again, if this was uh, seems a little bit confusing and, and you had some trouble, please also consider taking a look at my intro tutorial series. I think that you will find it very, very helpful. So thanks for watching and feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.